contrary to popular belief, the images that I take do not come out of the camera looking like this. No, they take work and most of it is done in Photoshop. So what we're going to do today is learn how I created the backdrop in this photo. And we're not going to do the entire photo, we're just going to do the background. So I've started with the masked image of Erica. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select a medium gray or a little darker than medium gray to make our background. And we're going to hit Alt Delete or Option Delete to fill it in with the foreground color. Next what we're going to do is we're going to make a new layer and start building up our backdrop. This one is going to give the illusion of the net of the bend in the backdrop. Uh, be sure to label your layers because you will get lost fast. Alright, we're going to hit G or hit our gradient tool. We're going to go up and select foreground to, to transparent and we're going to make sure that we select a slightly darker color than our background. We're going to make sure we're on our, what is it, our fourth option, which is a reflected. We're going to hold down shift and we're going to draw ourselves a gradient. Now you can move this by hitting your move tool until you're happy with it. About there's good. Make another new layer and we're going to add a highlight now. This highlight is going to give the illusion of the background light. And again, we're going to do foreground to transparent with our gradient tool. This time we're going to hit white. And it may be a little blinding, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to start using our circular gradient tool. Start from her waist, holding down shift, we're going to drag down. And this is trial and error, and this typically it takes a few times. We're going to drag it below our background bend layer, and we're going to reduce the opacity. 56, 57 looks about right. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to bring up our ruler tool by hitting Command or Control R. We're going to drag down a guide to about the middle of where our background bend is. By hitting our rectangular marquee, we're going to drag it and we're going to hit Command J or Control J and we're going to bring that selection onto a new layer. We're going to once again select that area again and we're going to delete it from the original highlight layer by hitting delete. And we're going to make sure that we name this layer. Uh, highlight floor works pretty good. Okay, from here what we're going to do is we're going to take and hit command T which will bring up our free transform. Right click and hit perspective. Grab the corner and pull it out to the edge of the document. Hit Command T again, which brings up our free transform, and we're going to stretch it to the bottom of the document. Hit Enter. And that will finish up the floor. You can adjust the opacity of these layers again, uh, but it looks pretty good. Alright, so on to the next step, which would be making a new layer. And this is going to be our highlight layer, and this is going to add a little more punch to the right behind her. Uh, as if we had another strobe. We're going to use our brush this time and we're going to do a soft brush, 0% hardness and uh, I'm using the Wacom tablet so this is a little easier than it looks. Uh, okay, just start clicking, make sure you're on white and we're going to click a few times and uh, adjust our brush size up or down. This is just whatever it looks good to you. Um, this, is, this is not a recipe here. All right, back and forth, we got it. And uh, you can come back in and adjust this over and over again. Again, adjust the opacity of the layer. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is add a little color. Uh, hit colorize, and we're going to just drag. This is whatever looks good to you. We're gonna try to find that purple that we used for the original image. And there it is. It looks pretty good to me. Let's add some text. Boom, sexual education.